Welcome back. I'm just making a, a short series of videos talking about uh, facing depression uh, and I've talked a bit about my, my own experience uh, of, of a battle with anxiety and depression um, and I've shared how there can be the temptation to flee to run away. I've also talked about how this is something not uncommon to, to Christians. Christians get depressed um, and pastors and leaders and even some very famous and very godly men and women have, have battled with it. And I wanted just to talk uh, today about um, three different ways in which we can experience depression. And part of that is to, to try and um, bust some myths, to be a bit of a myth buster on this. So here's the first thing. I think that there is a, there are twin dangers of going to extremes, of assuming that depression is only and always ever an illness and therefore we just give drugs uh, or we leave it to the psychotherapist and that's it. And at the other extreme, uh, the belief that depression is simply a sign of sin, it's a spiritual weakness thing and we deal with it on that basis and so i want to suggest that there are three aspects to depression uh, sometimes it will be one factor present uh, sometimes it may be a combination of all or some of the three uh, these are three that i'm aware of and i i think that if you start to say well there are other possibilities as well that I, I suspect they would come under these categories loosely in some way or another but uh, if you come up with more that's that's fine I don't think it destroys the thesis that there are uh, multiple ways in which we can face depression uh, so let me deal with the first one spiritual depression uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones was uh, both a medical doctor and a pastor he left the medical profession was top of his career went to be a pastor eventually pastored um, Westminster Chapel in London for many years uh, and Martin Lloyd-Jones um, wrote a book called Spiritual Depression which has become kind of an iconic work uh, and I want to suggest it's, it's helpful if read in context and understanding his perspective. Um, Lloyd-Jones recognises as a medical doctor that he himself, uh, so he recognises as a medical doctor, uh, that um, there is this medical depression that has organic causes, that has environmental causes, that is to do with your disposition. Um, but he also says there is something called spiritual depression. Uh, so I started to talk about him himself because I may be wildly speculating here, but I am fascinated at his engagement with the topic of depression. Um, as a doctor and as a pastor and I am fascinated with um, some of the other comments he made so he's teaching on the work of the Holy Spirit and that need for the sealing and the joy of the, the Spirit and something that he was hungering for and I've mentioned in my videos on the Holy Spirit that he looked at that as a, a second and separate and future experience that gave joy and assurance um, I may be misquoting him, but, but I also believe that he said something to the effect that he believed he'd only really, truly preached on two occasions. And obviously I'm not a doctor and I wasn't his pastor and I wasn't near, but it just at least leaves me asking the question, was there even in his own experience uh, some struggle with depression? Uh, Again, not important to this. If you are a biographical expert, maybe you will have knowledge on this and can comment further. I'd love to hear from you. But here's the point. Lloyd Jones said, whilst there is the medical thing, we, we do need to recognise spiritual depression. And just as when it's medical, you need medical treatment, when it's spiritual, you need spiritual treatment. And so I don't think we should ignore the spiritual dimension. 
And within that, I think there can be a number of, of factors. So if I am struggling, if I am living with unrepentant sin, it is going to affect me emotionally. It will affect me physically as, as well. It will disrupt the relationship with others. It is likely to affect my relationship with God. And so there can be a carrying an overwhelming sense of, of guilt and shame. But it isn't just about that. Uh, so, secondly, um, if I've been hurt and I start to carry bitterness uh, and I hold on to it, in a sense, that, that is actually, you know, we, let, let's be honest about it, holding on to bitterness is a wrong response to somebody's sin to me. It's a, a sinful response to the harm that they've done me if I hold on to it. Though I also recognise that a lot of people are not necessarily holding on Willingly, it has got a hold of them. So we want to be compassionate in that. If I hold on to things, they will they will hurt, and they will hurt spiritually. But also, uh, and again, I've written about this before. Uh, there can be a false guilt, a false shame, and so there's a spiritual dynamic to this. Um, but it's not right when you've been falsely accused. Uh, and uh, particularly when you've been abused and harmed physically, emotionally, sexually, there's a spiritual dimension to that as well. So spiritual um, causes, uh, being aware of them, being alert to what my spiritual health is like is important. And uh, whatever the, the primary causes of depression, it is good to stop and look at somebody's spiritual health. Secondly, the kind of the, the sort of the mainstream physical and um, environmental and organic type depression uh, where somebody struggles. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but I understand that, uh, you know, that the factors of chemical imbalances in the brain, uh, again, exactly what causes those, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not a medic. Um, I think as well we would include within this the fact is that if you are sleep deprived through outside noise, uh, the the neighbour, that was one of the factors in my loneliness at university that I had neighbours that just played loud music all through the night, you end up sleep deprived. Uh, carrying physical pain from an injury or an ongoing um, chronic health issue that again, that you are just constantly carrying, that will that will affect you and it will affect you emotionally. And if it's affecting your sleep patterns, that will make you tired. It will, it's gonna make you feel unhappy. And the third one is that depression, because I, I see depression as, as the symptom. It's the, it's the expression of emotional pain maybe not actually given the full description of the the disease itself and the root causes and the things so the third is is simply this it's direct oppression by others a direct harm if i knock on your door every morning and i punch you hard in the face not just a light tap but a full-on punch it will hurt you then you will have a reaction of pain. And if I knock on your door every day and punch you hard, and maybe two or three times a day or even more, that pain is going to get worse. It is going to do proper chronic long-term damage to your face, uh, to your neck, because you've been knocked back, uh, probably causing to the, the head and uh, even to the brain as well. Very dangerous, isn't it? We know we see the harm done to boxers. And if you went to the doctor and said, my head hurts, my thinking is fuzzy, my nose is bleeding terribly. Well, the doctor would want to treat all of those things. But also when he sees those types of injuries, he would say we need to involve the police here and the person that is doing that to you needs to be stopped well physical pain uh, 
So no surprise then when we talk about emotional pain, that there will be many times when the cause of that emotional pain is that somebody is constantly hitting you emotionally. They are slandering you, they are calling you names, they are belittling you, they are putting you down, they are accusing you falsely. And one mean joke about you, one false accusation is painful, isn't it? But to live with that constantly. And sadly, what will often happen for somebody who is low and struggling is that there's a vicious cycle because whether or not that was the first cause, it kind of creates the trigger for others to step in bluntly as bullies and to keep the speculation and the gossip going and to throw the accusations in and to be Job's comforters. And what you're doing is you're taking someone who's already hurting and you are hitting them hard and frequently. And you're making it worse and you're making it harder for them to recover. So just as you would want to say, stop the physical cause, deal with the person causing it, if there's a person causing it, what they are doing is wrong. Similarly, you can take the medication, you can take the sertraline or, or whatever, you can um, go for therapy, uh, you can get spiritual counsel and be encouraged to read scripture and to reflect. And, and, and it's absolutely right that you need those kinds of treatments there. But there has to be at the point where somebody confronts the emotional bully and says, this stops now. This finishes here. What you're doing is wrong. I, I believe that's our responsibility as elders in the church. Um, it shouldn't be down to the person themselves to have to confront. But it is something that has to be done. And we as elders in churches, as church leaders, need to step up, step up and say, we are not going to allow bullying to continue. If you were physically hitting them, we wouldn't allow that. You are hitting them. You are hurting them emotionally. Stop it. I want to say, if you need someone to help you with that, then don't keep suffering on your own. Reach out for help. If you are within our community, or even if not, and you just need someone to help, get in touch, use the contact form on, um, on Faith Roots, uh, get in touch with me, DM me on Twitter or personal message me on Facebook and say, really need some help. And I would want to stand alongside you. Don't let them keep doing it. So multiple ways that we can face suffering in depression, Often interrelated, making it complex. We're going to start to talk about some of the responses now. Thank you.